graphs are in the form y equals ax plus b. What can you tell me? Ooh, I didn't mean to do that. What can you tell me about this one? About the A and the B. What is the A for this one? Positive or negative? Positive, because it depends on the arm on the right. So A is going to be greater than 0. What is my B? Greater or less? Less. Why? It's the y-intercept, and the y-intercept is below. Can we agree? Okay. Yeah. Of linear graphs, what is the lowest x-intercept possible? Lowest number of x-intercepts? One, because the disk is going to have to cross through. What's the highest number of x-intercepts? With a linear. Still only one, because your minimum is equal to if it's odd or even, right? So if it's odd, it's going to disco. So you have at minimum one. Maximum is equal to the degree, correct? So if it's degree one, you have a minimum of one x-intercept and a maximum of one x-intercept. So basically, you're going to always have one x-intercept. What's the domain and range of linears? Anything that discos that's not a word problem. What's the domain and range? Yeah. Yes. And why? So we go x such that x is the noun of the reals. And the range, because the arms are going up and down in all directions, is y is noun of the reals as well. Okay, then we did quadratics. And this was linear. Linear is degree what? Yeah. It's degree 1 because it's equal to your largest exponent. Okay? What if I have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c? If I give you this. What is my a? Hate this board. What is my a? Less than or greater than? It's less than because it all depends on the right arm. It always depends on the right arm, your leading coefficient. So a has to be less than zero because it's down. The left is also down because it's an even degree. When it's an even degree, it does not disco. They go in the same order, correct? How many turning points does a linear have? What is a turning point, a fancy way of saying? Max or a min, correct? So a linear, does it have any maxes or mins? No. So a linear would have no turning points. How many point, turning points would this quadratic have? One turning point. And quadratics always have one turning point. They either have a max or a min. Okay, what about my C? In this case, if it's right here, what is my C going to be equal to? Zero. So your C can be less than zero, greater than zero, or equal to zero, depending on where your y-intercept is, right? What are the possible number of x-intercepts? What's the minimum number of x-intercepts? Yes, because the whole graph could be below if it has a maximum or above if it has a minimum, right? And only degree 2 have that. What's the maximum number of x-intercepts? 2, it's equal to the degree. The domain goes on forever outwards, so it's going to be x such that x is an element of the reals. If you're someone who's like, I don't need that x in that line, she's crazy. Yeah, you do. And I'm not crazy. I'm only Mark. And so do I mark the diplomas. If you don't have the squiggly brackets or x such that, you're not going to get the mark. It has to be like that. The range depends on if it's a maximum or a minimum. So if it's a maximum, my range is going to be y such that y is less than or equal to whatever the heck the maximum is. Please don't write maximum on your test. Don't write y is less than or equal to the maximum. Write what the maximum is. This is my general one, but you need to put a number in for it. And the maximum is the y. So if this was like a 4, let's say, this would be y such that y is less than or equal to 4. Right? Don't write maximum. Y yard. 
And then the only thing that changes is if it's concave up, it would be less or greater than or equal to the minimum, whatever the minimum value is, right? All right. And then we have, oh, and this is called the quadratic and degree what? Okay. The next one is a cubic. This particular cubic is y equals a x cubed plus b x squared plus c x plus b. What can you tell me about a in this one? It's positive because I only care about the right arm. Nothing changes. So a is greater than zero. I know it's down on the left because it's cubic and odd three functions disco, so they're not the directions. But can you tell me about the D in this one? It's actually right here. Yeah, so D is greater than zero because it's above. Okay? How many turning points does that cubic have? It has two. It has a max and a min. So this has two turning points. What are the options for turning number of turning points for cubic? Two or zero, yep. Because you can have a point of inflection, this curve. It's called a point. I love how it's your writing. It's terrible. Of inflection. Which is zero turning point. Because the definition of a turning point is a max or a min, and this doesn't have one. So if it says it has one turning point, it's a quadratic. If it says it has zero turning points, it could be linear or cubic. If it says it has two turning points, it has to be cubic, right? There's no option. How many, what's the minimum number of x-intercepts a cubic can have? One, because it just goes. It has to go through at some point. And what's the maximum? Three, it's always equal to the degree. And then my domain and range, because it just goes and it's not a work problem. So it's x such that x and l is real, and y such that y is l is real for range. So the possible number of solutions. Solutions means x intercept. Roots. Oh my gosh, this thing is running so terribly. Zero. So how many x-intercepts, roots, or zeros does a cubic function have? What are the possible numbers? One, because it just goes. Three, because it's a degree three. And two. One, two, and three. Right? It's just asking for the possible number of x-intercepts. It could have one. It could go like this. It could have two. It could go like this. Or it could have three. Then this one. So I want you guys um, to type that into your calculator. X cubed minus 4x squared minus 5. We're going to practice putting it into our calculators. I think I already showed you guys these answers, but. So I made this be 4, then 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Negative 4, negative 8, and 12. So everyone's typing that into their calculator.
Now your table of values are good and all, but you should find your maxes and mins. Every single time you have any type of max or min, you need to find it. You can't just guesstimate it. So I want everyone to find the, this one has, this one goes lower. So like the graph goes below. So if we type it in, we have x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5 rud exponent. So if I press graph on this one, I know that I need to see down here, correct? So what do I need to make bigger if I don't have this piece? Yeah, your y min, the bottom. So we're going to go to our y min and make it maybe be negative 20 and see if we can see it. So now we can see it. You have to find your maxes and mins. So everyone should be typing it in. So go, I'm going to find the max first. So I'm going to go second, trace, max, which is number four. I need to be on the left of it, enter, then I need to be on the right of it somewhere, enter, and then I hit enter again. What does this e to the negative 7 do mean? Zero. So this is at zero and negative 5. So I'm going to go to zero and negative 5, which is here. Then I have to find the other one. And I could label it. I could go 0 and negative 5. I usually label my mins and maxes. And then I go second, trace, minimum. Now I have to find the minimum. Left bound, right bound, enter. And I get 2.6, so 2.7 and negative 14.5. And negative 14.5. Looks like here. So that's enough. I should be able to sketch it perfectly with these two coordinates. That is the most ridiculous statement ever. That is not enough things, correct? So I can look through here, and I can say, hey, there's an x-intercept. I want to find that too. I want accuracy, the more accuracy. So I'm going to go second, trace, and how I get x-intercepts is I press number two, which is zero. And you learned this the last two years. So we're going to go on the left side of the x-intercept, which is down here, enter. Then on the right side of the x-intercept, enter, enter. And I get 4.3 and e to the negative 12, which is just... Zero. So I get 4.3 and zero. I can label that if it helps too. So now I have three points. I can draw the most perfect graph in the world. No. Where's the last place I can go to get a whole bunch more points? Yeah, second graph, or I can go second value, right? If I do second value, I can put in x equals negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, get a whole bunch more. Or I can just go second graph and I get a table of values. So I know here I have um, negative 2 and negative 29 is too big. Negative 1 and negative 10. Negative 1 and negative 10 is about here. Um, I have 0 and negative 5 already plotted. 1 and negative 8. And then I have 2 and negative 13. And then I have 3 and negative 14. And then I have 4 and negative 5. And then I have 5 and 20. Could I even get more if I wanted to? I could go second trace value 1.5 and get the y. Second trace value 2.5 get the y. Second trace value 3.5. I could get a whole bunch more points. People will say, well, the table of values only gives me three. But you can, even if it only gave you three, you can find way more by doing second trace value. 
So I connect these. I make sure there's arrows coming off of them because they keep going. So when you give me a graph like this, not one point is plotted, how many marks am I giving you? Zero. You didn't plot a point, you get no marks. Zero points, zero marks. It's quickly, they work together in badness. Okay? How many x-intercepts does this one have? One. Does it say what is the x-intercept? No, it says the number of x-intercepts. You have to read it. Okay? The next one says y-intercept. It doesn't say the number of y-intercepts. It says y-intercept. So I'm asking for the actual y-intercept which is a coordinate, and it's at 0 and negative 5. Please don't write just negative 5. If you're that person who's still doing it, remember that these are coordinates. Because I have a positive 1 leading coefficient, I know I'm up on the right, and because it's a degree 3, I know I'm down on the left. The domain, because it's not a word problem, it's cubic, it's x such that x is an element of the reals. The number of turning points, how many max and mins does this graph have? Two. So it has two turning points. And then the range, because it's a degree three and it's not a word problem, is y such that y is an element of the reals. Okay, I want you guys to type this one into your calculator. Everyone's typing in y equals negative 3.8t plus 225. Then we're going to talk about it. What kind of graph is this? linear, so I know it's a line, and then people are like, but it shows nothing. There's, no, there's nothing there. Well, let's actually look at the question. So anytime that people get the equation, they think life is easier. Actually, the moment you get an equation, life is a bit harder, because you don't have any table of values to base your window off of. You know when you do a regression, you can kind of go below the lowest value, you can go above the highest value, and you usually get it to show up somewhat. With this, you have not as better as easy of a chance. But we do know something about this, so let's talk about it. So it says the volume of water in a cylindrical ta water tank is being drained, so it's going downwards, uh, and it can be modeled by this linear function. So this tells me that it's down on the right and up on the left, correct? I know it's doing something like this, at the very least. And what is this? The y-intercept. So that is the y-intercept. And what is y in this case? Well, it's v of t, and v represents the volume. So this is a volume, so it's 0 and 225. This is the volume at what? At time 0, correct? So that's the largest volume that this tank can hold, correct? And that's at 0 and 225. We agree? So I go to my window, and I'm like, cool, 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 cool. So my window maxes out at 10. My y max is 10. This baby only starts at 225. We agree? So if you have it at 10, your y max needs to be at least the y intercept, just so you know, or you're not seeing the y intercept, right? If your y max doesn't contain the y intercept, you can't see it. So the y intercept is 225, so I'm going to make this be 300 and see if I can see it. Now I'm starting to see it, but I'm actually not seeing further because t is time in minutes, right? And I'm maxing out at 10 minutes. So I need to make this bigger to the right. So I'm going to make my x max be, let's try 50. So I can't see it. So I'll make my x max be 80. Now I can see it. I can see the whole thing. Because, and why do I say I can see the whole thing? Because I can't, I don't need to see anything low. This is volume, right? It has to stop at zero. 
I don't need to see anything to the left because that's time, and time can't be lower than zero. You're not traveling back in time. Okay? So this question says, how long will it take for the volume to get to zero liters? So it gave me volume. Is volume X or Y in the equation? It's Y. So they gave me Y equals zero. So what are they actually asking me for? The x-intercept, right? But we can put that into, when we know y, we can put it into y2. So I can go to my y2 and I can put in a 0. And I go second, trace, 5, enter, enter, enter. So I get 59.2 liters. Liters. 59.2 minutes. So this is a written response. I'm writing a sentence. So it says nearest minute. So I'm going to do 59. So it says, how long will it take for the volume to get to zero liters? It takes 59 minutes for the volume. Okay, what if I ask for a domain and range, which is everyone's weakness when it comes to written response? Well, first off, let's draw what part actually matters. So if I draw it like this, I have a line like this. This is volume. I'll help myself out. And it's in liters. And this is time. And it is in minutes. We agree? Now, since it's linear, I could say YER and XER, correct? Except it's a written response, so I can't. Didn't you say when um, we're doing like that question, you'd have to round it up to 60 minutes? Just because it's 59.2. Yep. Good catch. 60 minutes. Because it wouldn't hit zero at 59. Okay. Yeah, it would still have some water in it. Because it needs to get to zero liters, and at 59, it wouldn't have zero liters. There'd still be water in it. You have a cylindrical tank. It's dumping. It's dumping. It's dumping. It's dumping. It's dumping, and it dumps completely to zero at 59.2 minutes, right? So if it's at 59 minutes, if I round down using rounding rules, would the tank be empty? No, I'd have to actually wait till 60 minutes to be empty if I'm taking nearest minute which is what I told her, and then I didn't do it myself today, which is off. Good kid, <laughs> thanks for bringing it back up. Okay, so we do have a nice little spot here sitting. We can't go negative time, so domain is along the x-axis. So I know that this goes from 0, and then we said 60, correct? So my domain has to sit between 0 and 60. I can't go back in time, and once it's empty, I'm done. The tank's empty. So domain, I have to make sure to use the variable that they are using. So what did they use for x in this equation? t. They didn't use x, did they? They used t. So I have to use t as well. So I'm going to go, oh, I'm going to cry. I'm going to do, I hate this board. I'm going to make a squiggly bracket, and I'm going to say t such that, not x, because there's not even an x in this equation. t such that, and then I sandwich my two values when it's like this. So I go low to high, so I go 0, I sandwich the t variable in between it, and I do a 60. And then I go less than or equal to, less than or equal to. And the reason you draw two l's, as long as you go low to high, it'll work every single time. The reason why is you are reading from the t. So this is, t is greater than or equal to 0, t is less than or equal to 60. It's because, don't, don't think you need these when you draw the domain. I'm just proving the point. So I'm reading from here, I'm going, t is greater than or equal to 0, and then I'm reading from here, t is less than or equal to 60. You do not need these in the domain to prove a point. And then you have to go behind with t, e, r. We can't use x's because there wasn't even an x in this question. 
Volume. What's the lowest volume I could get? Zero. What's the highest volume this thing's sitting at? 225. The y-intercept in this case because it went downhill, right? What is the variable for y? Make sure you're paying attention. The variable for y is not v. The variable for y is whatever the whole thing is here. So it's actually v of t. That is y. I could take the v of t, I could throw it across the room, and I could put a y. If you're on a phone, don't be. Your test is on Wednesday. So range. We're going to go v of t such that 0 v of t is my y. My highest is 225. And then I do less than or equal to signs between L, slanted L, low to high. And then v of t is an element of the real. I want to know from you um, when time equals 10.5 minutes, how much water is in the tank? Go. I gave you t, which is x. So we go second trace value. Whenever I know x, that's where I always go. 10.5. If it errors, it's because your window wasn't big enough, right? But I made my window big already. So it's 185.1 liters. Would be the volume. That was just an add-on. Okay, then we're flipping over. Okay, we want to describe the characteristics and trend of this data. I don't so what type of function does this look like it is? Linear? which means it's y equals ax plus b. This particular graph, what can you tell me about a? Yeah. Looks like it's going down, right? So we could say that since it's down on the right, a must be less than 0. And what could we say about b? Is it greater or less? Greater. It actually looks like it's at 40, but... We'll say greater. So this is a degree what function? And the trend in data? Say downward, I will say decreasing. <laughs> this one I wanted to give you because it's an equation that isn't in standard form and everything else for the most part I've given you has been in standard form. I want everyone to type it into their calculators. There is no leading coefficient and there is no constant because there's brackets, right? So we all are going to type it in. We get x and x minus 3 squared. What kind of graph does it look like? It looks like it's cubic, doesn't it? And it would be because you would actually expand this out if you wanted to. You could. You would go y equals x, x minus 3, x minus 3. Because x minus 3 squared just means you have two of them, which is x times x times x, which is x cubed, right? Hence why this one ends up looking like a cubic. Cubic or degree 3. X-intercepts, we have to find the x-intercepts. So I want everyone to go into their calculator and try and find the x-intercepts. So we're going to try and find the first one. So we go second, trace, two. And everyone should be doing this. Everyone in their calculators. Because just because I'm doing it, I am not using your calculator on Wednesday. I'm not running it. I'm not telling you how to do it. I will not come over and help you. So we need left bound of this x-intercept. I hit enter. Right bound of this x-intercept is above. I hit enter. And this one is at 0, 0. Please write out your x-intercepts in coordinates. So 
Then we need to find the other one, and I need everyone to pay attention because finding it using the zero thing isn't going to work. So if I go second trace number two zeros, and I go left bound of this one, and I go right bound of it, and I hit enter, it gets Madison. It says there's no sign change. That happens when twofold. There's two places where this could happen. That actually doesn't touch the x-axis. So, you know, like you could look and the graph looks like it actually touches it, but it doesn't, right? It might go above it and then just bounce above, but this, heck, this one looks like it actually does touch it, correct? So, if your vertex, no, I guess not vertex in this case, if your minimum or maximum is the x-intercept, using second trace number two zero isn't going to work, okay? So, what you actually have to do is find the min or max and see if the y is zero, and if the y is zero, it is an x-intercept. So I'm going to try and find it by doing minimum. Second trace minimum. Right here on the left side of the minimum. Hit enter. Right side of the minimum. Hit enter. And enter. And I get 3 and this e to the negative 13, which is just what? 0. So does that look like an x-intercept then? 3, 0? Yes. And sometimes doing second trace value or second trace 0 doesn't actually work. And it doesn't work when it's a min or a max. It just fights you. So this one is at 3, 0 as well. Now they want the minimums and the maximums. So I want, so the minimum. Okay, the minimum is at 3, 0. We just found it. And then the maximum we still need to find. I don't care if you found them already. This is just more practice, right? You have a test on Wednesday. So we're going to go second trace maximum. Now you see on the left side of the maximum. And the right side of the maximum. And enter, and I get 1 and 4. Um, is the leading coefficient positive or negative on this graph? It's positive because it's up on the right. So if I did ask you to change it to a different form, like y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, you'd say a is greater than 0. And you'd say d equals 0, right? Because it's your y-intercept is at 0, 0. So our y-intercept is at 0, 0. And what's the domain and range? Because this is not a word problem, but it is a cubic. If this goes, so it's x e r y e r every single time. X such that x is an element of the real. Y such that y is an element of the real. I put this one in because it's a little bit different and I wanted people just to be able to, if you get something a little different on a diploma that you could do it, you wouldn't be thrown off by the thousands, the word the thousands. So here it says a snowboard company uses the relation P of X. So P of X is my Y this time and X is my actual X. So that's nice. Last time it was V of T and T, right? This one's P of X and X. So if I go to state range, I would state P of X instead of Y. And if I wanted to go state domain, I'd still use X's. So here it says the model and profits. Um, in the model, P is the profit, so that's my Y, in the thousands of dollars. So if I got an answer for P of X as 150, that would be 150,000 because it's in thousands of dollars. If I got an answer of P of X of 1, that would be 1,000. And why do they do that? They do that so you don't have to make these massive windows. Because 150 is 150,000. I would have to make my Y max be 150,000, right? But if I write it in the thousands, I only have to make my Y max be 150. Okay? And then this one is X is the number of snowboards, but once again, in thousands. So I talked to you about this when we did this one. It said how much profit, so they want Y, should the company expect if, the manufacturer, if they manufacture 2,000 snowboards? So what is that actually as X? It's just two. It's so that you don't have to make your window massive. Okay? 
If it doesn't say in the thousands, your x would be 2,000. You'd have to make sure your x had at least 2,000 in it, and your y max had at least whatever massive thousands, right? You just make bigger windows so they don't have the word thousands. Everyone should be paying attention. So we go to y equals, and we type it in, and it is, what is it? 210x minus 6x squared. Put your backpack. So we go to window, make our y max bigger. I'm going to make it be 100, see what happens. Getting closer. I know it's concave down because the equation was concave down. So I know I have a maximum. There's no point in making the minimum bigger. So now I actually see the top and the bottom, correct? And if I had to give domain and range, my domain would be between 0 and this x-intercept. My range would be between 0 and the maximum of the y. Right? Whenever there's a parabola there's a, and it's a word problem, you have a limited x and a limited y, the sandwiched one. So here it says, how much profit when you know x is 2? So we go second trace value whenever we know x to enter. And we get 180. Is that only $180 for 2,000 snowboards? It would be 180000 I want you guys to find the maximum. Go use your calculator and give me the maximum. It's the reason why I'm making you follow along. Even if you did these, you're working on this. You should be finding the maximum. Go. So, we're going to go second trace, maximum. We're going to go on the left side, enter, right side, enter, enter. And we get 1.75. And 183.75. Okay. So if I ever ask for maximum something, you have to find the maximum. If I ask, ever ask for minimum something, you have to find the minimum. But then there's two answers, and we have to figure out which one I'm asking for. Right? And it all depends on what maximum I ask for. If I, In this case, I have numbers of snowboards, which is X. For some reason, it looks like I have a Y because my board sucks. And then the profit is Y. So if I ask you for max profit, which one are you going to give me? 183.75 because it's Y and profit is Y. If I ask for the maximum number of snowboards that would make me have the maximum profit, you would tell me 1.75. But if you use those numbers, you're going to have to say 1.75 thousands, right? Because technically, it's not 1, it's 1.75 thousands. So this is in the thousands, so I would have to move it three places, decimal places. So I'd have to go one, two, three. So that would be actually 1,750 snowboards would maximize the profit. Anything more than that, you can tell it's going back downwards, correct? So if you made that much in a day, that would be the maximum profit you can make. After that, it ends up costing you more than that. And then this one, you'd have to move it three places. So it would actually be 183,000. 750 would be the max profit. Anything more than that, it actually comes back down because it's a parabola, right? It maxes out at a certain profit, and then after that, the profit declines. So this one says the maximum profit of snowboards sold can be found at what point of the graph? And it would be the vertex. Whenever it's maximum or minimum, it is the vertex. So if ever in a question on the test I ask for the maximum something, or the minimum something, you have to find the maximum or minimum and then figure out which area you have to take the X or the Y. So ask for maximum snowboards, I take the X value. Maximum profit, I take the Y value. Okay, which of the following is the most likely cubic function? It's this one. Because this one starts curving back down, it's actually sinusoidal. It'll go like this. Which is tra it's just trig function, it's the last unit. Okay. 
Identify the correct polynomial function with each graph. So what I know for this first one is it's a quadratic. We agree? And if it's a quadratic, it would be of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, which some of these aren't in the right form. And some of these you probably just typed in and matched the graphs. It doesn't matter. I'm fine with that. But let's talk a little more about this one. What would my a be in this case? Positive, because it's upwards. What would my c be in this case? Positive, and in this case, it's actually 4. Right? So I'm looking for a quadratic that's positive, leading coefficient, and a y-intercept of 4. Well, this one here is in the format that we like. This one isn't. But this one has a negative leading coefficient, doesn't it? So it's immediately out. So therefore, it has to be this one, even if I didn't know anything else. And if you expand this one out, you get 2 times negative 2 times negative 1, so it actually is 4. It doesn't have a positive leading coefficient, so it's 5. I know it can't be the first two. Those are linear. It can't be the bottom two because those are cubic. I'm not going to write where I want it to. Oh, I like it. Okay, graph 2. Linear or cubic? Cubic. cubic. So it's in the form y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus bx plus c. What is my a going to be? Negative. The leading coefficient is going to be negative or zero. And my y-intercept or my d is actually zero. It doesn't exist. So I'm looking for a cubic with a y-intercept of 0 and a negative leading coefficient. And this is the only one, at the very least, that has a negative. So it's going to be 3. That one's positive. And then this last one is linear, which means it's degree 1, which means it's y equals ax plus b. What's my a? Positive. What's my B? 0.5. Or a half, right? This one has a negative A, so it's out. This one has a positive A, because what's in, what is the A? A is the number in front of the X, even though these are out of order. This would be my A. It's a positive A, and this is the constant by itself, which is? Half. This one's 4. I've been doing so well. Okay, let's flip over. This one here says write an equation. So I'm going to do the equation first before I try and sketch the graph. Now let's look here. It has one turning point. What equation, what of the three graphs has one turning point? Quadratic is the only option. Linear has no turning points. Cubic has 0 or 2. Quadratic is the only one with one turning point. So I know my equation is going to have to be in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And they want it to have a maximum value. A maximum value of a quadratic looks like this. So what can you tell me about the a? It needs to be negative. So I can put anything in there. I'm going to go negative 1. If I'm allowed to pick anything, I pick 1s. Because 1s would just make your graph smaller. They don't make such a massive window. Um, and then it says a y-intercept of 3. So I know I have a plus 3 at the back. Now I could just use negative x squared plus 3 as the equation, and that would be good enough. Or I can put something in the middle. I'm going to put a plus 1x. You might have something totally different, and that's fine if you graphed it. But what you need to have is you need to have a quadratic. So if you didn't have a quadratic, you're wrong. You need to have a negative number in front of the x squared. If you don't have that, you're wrong. You need to have a plus 3 at the back. If you don't have that, you're wrong. You can have anything in here, 7x, 1.3x. Like You can put anything in for the x. You can even put a 0. Okay, so as long as yours follow those rules, it has to be a quadratic, negative number in front, and a 3 at the back. Yeah. So I want everyone to graph this one for me. Graph my graph. You can draw one, you can sketch it beside, I don't really care. But I want to see you draw this accurately. So everyone's typing it in and sketching it. When I type this one in, I know I have 0 and 3 as my y-intercept right off the bat. You need to get your maximum.
So I'm getting 0.5 and 3.25, so it's like here. And you guys, I will always state what the coordinate is if it's not a like, perfect max or perfect min. If it's one that is actually like not on a cross section, I'll always label the point because then I can come back and answer any questions about the max and mins because I actually have it written down for myself. Okay? Then I'm going to get my x intercept. So I go second trace is zero. And then left bound, right bound. And my first one is at negative 1.3. And I'm going to label that. And then my other one, left bound, right bound, enter, I get two points. And as lovely as those three points are, and if you think they're enough, they're not. So I go to my table of values, ooh, which is really long. And I have negative 2 and negative 3, uh, negative 1 and 1, 0, 3, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, negative 3. And now I have more coordinates. Oof. Make sure if you don't draw your straight, I have to undo that. Always put arrows on the end. If yours doesn't have arrows, make arrows. Okay. This one, it wants cubic, positive end direction, y-intercept of negative 4. At the minimum, you would need this. Positive a, y equals positive something. So I go positive 1x cubed. Minus 4. At the minimum, you would need that. You can put anything in between that, though, and you'd still be right. And you can make this be anything but 1. So I could go like y equals positive 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 1x. Like these do not matter. And then minus 4. So this needs to be a positive. This needs to be a negative. And then you would go sketch it. Okay, we're going to go over here. I want you to write out the linear regression. Everyone's typing it in because I'm going to ask you one question as well. So we're going to do the linear regression and I'm going to ask you a question. So for this one, I would get y equals, and it says the nearest hundred. Remember, how many zeros does a hundred have? Two. two. So a hundredth is two decimal places. So the rounding rules are however many zeros that number has is how many decimal places. So tenth. 10, 10 has one zero, so one decimal place. Hundredth, two zeros, two decimal places. Thousandth, three zeros, three decimal places. Okay? So we're going to get y equals zero decimal. And you need to write it as the actual equation, not just like y equals ax plus b and then put a equals b equals. You need to write out the equation like I'm doing. So y equals 0, 0.0, it should be 9. 0 decimal, 0, 9, x minus 3.42. I want you to tell me um, what y equals, uh, sorry, when y equals 1.4, what is x? Go. So we're putting this into y2. If your calculator can't see where they intersect, your calculator can't calculate where they intersect. Okay? So make sure you change your window so that it can see it. So I got x equals 54.77. So your y2, you put 1.4, and then you want to find out where they intersect. So you go second trace 5, enter, enter, enter. Okay? All right. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And I always will make, like, I'll look at my table. When I get a table, I think it's easier because I see 10. Okay, I'm going to go negative 10. I see 100. Okay, I'm going to go 200. If I just double, yeah, I even double. I'll go to 200. And usually that's enough to make it fit. All right. I want you to do a quadratic regression. What's your very first step you're going to do? Clear out your y equals. And then you're going to clear out your lists. So everyone go get the quadratic regression. So this one is again to the nearest hundredth, and it says quadratic. So we're going to get y equals 6 decimal 0, 7 x squared plus or minus. Twenty nine point one one X um, plus eighty eight decimal three nine. Make sure you're picking the right regression. I want now when X equals twelve. What is Y? Go. All right, so when x equals 12, y equals 612.56. Okay, this one, I want you to give me a cubic regression, data to the thousandth, but I want x equals 50, what is y? So for cubic, I get y equals, this is near thousandth, 0 0.005x cubed. Minus zero decimal three eight eight x squared plus ten decimal two three x plus one hundred sixty eight decimal six four and then second trace value fifty so y equals three hundred sixty two decimal six nine. Okay, uh, we have one last one and we have six minutes. Let's go. Typing this one in, um, I want you to actually fill in the time of day for X and the depth of water for Y. And it says time after noon. That doesn't mean you have to start at one or anything like that. Time after noon just means that 1030 in the morning is 1030 in the morning. If it was 1030 in the evening, you'd have to add it to the 12th. You have to do a 24-hour clock, basically. So everyone's typing this one in, and it's a cubic. So this one we would get y equals negative 0 decimal 0, 015 x cubed plus 0 decimal 637 x squared minus 8.417 x plus 47.6. Now this one wants you to interpolate the water at 17. So that's when x equals 17. So we do second trace value 17. And I get 14.58 feet. This is the one I really wanted to get to. <clears throat> The water at 10.30 in the morning. Do I go 10.3? No. What do I have to do? 10.5. And I get 12.01. <coughs> like I said, right sentences. That's everything.